Hey guys, welcome to the vlog. Welcome to the August vlog for the book club. And I am currently filming a new intro. I've already done my intro, but I'm doing this because I have an announcement of sorts. I have some things I'm changing with the book club. And I wanted to kind of let you know that at the very beginning of this video so that you could go to the end of the video when I chat more about it. And so yeah, that's all I have for kind of a quick little announcement, which is basically go to the end of the video for more details on some changes. But let me segue back into my original footage of my thoughts on this book. So I am starting the next book. I am starting Nature of Fragile Things by Susan Meisner. Again, a reminder, spoiler filled vlog on all my thoughts and all my feelings about this book because I am so stinking excited to get to this book. Like I've said in a number of different videos, this is probably my most anticipated book because I loved as bright as heaven. I started this last night, so I was like, okay, I better update everybody and start this out because otherwise I'm just going to tear through this book and not do a very good vlog. So my initial thoughts. So I liked how it opened up, like how did it, it opened up with this like question and answer, like detective thing going on, which I just was not aware that there was like any mystery involved, let alone the fact that maybe her husband's missing and there's reason to be suspicious about that. And so I thought that was really interesting. That really sucked me in. I liked the very end part where the guy was like, so why did you decide to meet a man you just met? And she's like, I married him because I wanted to. And you're just like, that's so interesting because what would draw a person to do that? And so that's a little bit of the first part that I was reading. I was reading about like what did drive that decision in her and that being that she immigrated to New York, I believe, from Ireland. And she's just living in just these terrible conditions with housemates and just lots and lots of poverty, lots of hardship. And she just did not imagine that's what life in America was going to be like. And then she sees this advertisement for a man looking for a mail order bride, which, my gosh, if that happened today, that would just be so strange, right? But I guess it was a little bit more common then. I honestly have no idea of the history of mail order brides. If anybody knows anything about that, let me know down below. It might cause me to go on a little bit of a research rabbit trail because it is curious. Like how common was that? During what time frames did that happen a lot? But that was her story and then she she goes out and he picks her up and then he takes her right to the courthouse to like marry her and she's like, ah. You know, she was ready for it, but like, I guess maybe she was ready for it, but I was like, ah, that's way too fast. And then like, he didn't even want pictures. And she's like, oh, I'll take a picture, please, you know? And so I liked that. I liked her meeting the, the girl and that's pretty much where I'm at. And I'm just, I'm curious where it's gonna go or what the story is. Cause I'm glad that that first little chunk set up this like mystery aspect. Cause otherwise I just, I wasn't sure if it would just be a, a story about a woman who married someone she didn't know, which is interesting in and of itself, but what's gonna happen? What's the intrigue? And then when does the earthquake hit? So I hope it happens a little earlier in the book because I that part I'm probably the most interested in is the earthquake and how accurate that is. So I'm excited. So that is my start to reading this book. It's gonna be good. I, well, I hope it's really good. I guess you will see by my reactions. I've heard great things, so I think it's gonna be really good. Hey guys, so I just got done filming my June, July wrap up, which is definitely up on the channel before this one goes up on the channel. And it was really fun. It's been a while since I have done a wrap up video. I've just been so bad about that with all the homeschool stuff. Ugh, so I'll put those there. But I also wanted to take some time and update you on the book we're reading. Where is it? Here it is. The Nature of Fragile Things. So I have been enjoying this. I've been reading it at night and it's been hard for me to put down. So let me tell you where I'm at. You guys, it is so good. So where I left you off, it was just kind of basic. She was taking the train to meet this guy, to marry this guy, right? And so I'm on page 136, I think it is. And it's so good. So I've been enjoying her as she's been getting to know this girl, the little girl cat, so sweet, the sweet little girl and just teaching her to read and just really falling in love with her. And I've just been really enjoying that. But I just got to the part where the girl, Belinda, is that her name? 
yeah, Belinda, where Belinda came to the door. Oh my gosh, like you know what I'm talking about. If you've read this book, I was so shocked by that. I knew there was this other woman and she's gonna show up before the earthquake. And I'm like, okay, we're getting to the earthquake, right? I'm like, I was tracking the months and being like, okay, it's almost April. That means earthquake's coming. And then there's a knock on the door, right? I'm like, okay, there's this woman. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, what is going on in this story? Like that was a twist that I just was not seeing. And it was so interesting. It was so interesting as they were just realizing who they were married to and realizing like this guy is a liar, but they don't know why. What what's the, what's the purpose behind all this and all this stuff? So I found it fascinating. And the last part I was reading was where they got into his desk drawer and they started seeing all this stuff, right? Birth certificate, death certificate, this idea that he was purposely going after women who were going to inherit stuff, okay? And then she, the main character, was looking for like the death certificate of his old wife, right? This, the mom to this child she loves and she doesn't find it. And then she finds a letter that she, that Candace, the mom to the girl is in like some sanatorium or mental institute, I guess. I'm not really sure. I haven't gotten too far on that, but I'm just like, oh no. The mom's still alive, like, and then I just feel this like, ominous feeling like oh my gosh he's gonna walk in on them he's gonna figure out what's going on is he like a bad guy like is he gonna hurt them and so I just I'm feeling this anxiety in this part where all this stuff is just being revealed like and it's funny because I feel like the level of revealing that is going on in this story right now usually is left off until the end that's usually like when everything kind of comes to so I'm like what else is gonna happen in this story right where you because we already know now that he is conning them. We don't really know why. And like I was saying at the beginning, I'm really enjoying like reading the investigator logs because I'm like, what are they looking for? What do they suspect of him that they're trying to get her to say? And so I'm just really curious. Like Susan Meisner is doing an excellent job of just pulling me in and making me super attached to the characters, super interested in what's going on because I'm like, what is this guy doing? And then I'm like, there's an earthquake coming, right? There's an earthquake coming. And like, hours so I'm anticipating that next so that's where I'm at in the book I just had to stop reading because I knew I had to update you guys because I had to be like oh my I was not expecting that kind of a plot line in the middle of the book if that makes sense so I'm loving this I'm loving this book I'm loving it I knew I'd really like it and so I'm glad that I am and I can't wait to hear what you guys have to say about this book so anyway that's what I have I'll keep reading. Hey everybody. So it's Sunday. I've been reading my book. I've been doing lots of stuff, which actually maybe I'll show you. So we moved last November, so it's like eight months, and we didn't really unpack or put anything on the walls until today. So this is our dining room behind me, and it's just this long, narrow room with two big walls on either side and then the window on the back. And I just didn't know what to do with it. I felt like it just had so much wall space and I didn't want to overwhelm it. And we have a big table because I have a big family. And so I'll show you what I did. So you can see I put together a gallery wall in through here. It's still old pictures, so I need to update the pictures. But I thought it turned out pretty well. And then this, I'm so excited about this. So as you can see, it is like this rope hanging thing. And that's what I want to put on this opposite wall. So over here, gallery wall. Over here, rope wall thing. I think it'll be really fun. Anyway, so that's what I've been doing. I unpacked a ton of boxes. I'm going to try and put decor out and I'm going to update you on the book. So I am still loving it. My last update was where the they had just found out all this stuff about him. They'd gone through his desk and all that and then they were going to leave in the morning and I was like, you ladies should leave tonight. That, I remember having that thought. I'm like, you should leave tonight. You should just go. And then he came home, right? And that was just like a little scary. He was really intense. And I was like, who is this? Is he going to like hurt them? And they thought he was going to hurt them. And then he fell and hit his head. But I don't think he actually died because of some of the other content in the book where the investigator is, um, is talking with her. 
it sounds like he is still alive and they're trying to find him and they're trying to kind of figure out her story. But anyway, so he scared me and then the earthquake, right? And then the earthquake and then the other woman, I think, was it Belinda? Having her baby, having her premature baby in a hospital where the roof was on fire and all this stuff and then everybody moving to the park. Like that part I found fascinating. I thought again, Susan Meisner did an excellent job of just pulling you in to a situation, kind of like she did in As Bright as Heaven, where she pulled you into how it would feel for the Spanish flu to be going from house to house. This was like how it would feel to live through an earthquake. What are the things that happen afterwards? What some of the emergency protocols, all that stuff, and how they have to go and stay in tents and all that stuff. So that's about where I was. And then it ended with the investigator. So where's my book? Here's my book. It ended with the investigator. So I think I'm about halfway. Yes, I'm about halfway. And it ended with this where he was talking to her and she was sharing with him like some of her suspicions about her husband and the fact that she thinks that he kind of offed that one woman, the one that was on the ranch. And the investigator agreed. And then they both asked the question that I have been wondering, why did he marry her? If he's like, after all of these heiresses and the gold and the ranch and all this stuff, like, it sounds like he's after money, but why did he marry her? And so she doesn't know, the investigator doesn't know, but then it ends, it ended, the last chapter ended where she told the investigator that she figured out why he married her. She figured it out after she went and dropped the girl off with the mother, with Candace. And so now I'm like, what happened? This book, I feel like there's lots of good twists and it is really making me want to read it quickly. And so I thought I would just get on here and update you guys really quick. Just wanted to hop on really quick and give an update on the nature of fragile things. So I've been reading it a bunch and it has sucked me in. I am really enjoying it. You can probably hear the dryer. I apologize if you can. Um, it's laundry day, it's school day. It's the middle of August and we're definitely cranking on school and it's, it's good. I'm getting my footing, but it's still just kind of a lot. But as for the book, I'm really enjoying it still. I have been in the section where she went to meet the first wife or I don't know how many wives, right? But the, the mother of Kat. And so she went to the sanatorium, which now I realize is for TB patients. I don't know why I didn't really think about that. But she went there and had all of those kind of conversations, which were just so hard as like thinking about the mom, it's her child, but then thinking about this woman who just loves this girl. Oh my gosh. And then them trying to just make decisions on like what's best for, for Kat, what's best for the mom. <sighs> okay. Well, my camera died, so I don't know where I was, but I think I was talking about Susan Meisner's writing. I have really enjoyed this book because of that. Like I have been drawn into the characters. I feel like I am really rooting for them, but she doesn't only do characters well. I feel like she does events and settings really well. So I felt that way with the Spanish flu and I feel that way with the earthquake, that she does a really good job of drawing you into kind of how it would feel to experience those events, which is just an amazing skill for a historical fiction writer. So I think she's just on par for that. And I'm really liking the bit of a mystery in this book, which we didn't have in As Bright as Heaven that had a different flavor to it, but I love kind of the mystery aspect to it. It's kind of like what I was saying when I was reading Where the Crawdads Sing. I really enjoy that added kind of mystery to the book. And so I'm really close to the end. I think I have like 75 pages left, something like that. So I'm going to finish it and then I'll wrap up this vlog. Okay guys, I finished the book. I finished it. It was so good. I just finished it last night. So I'm kind of still processing it, but I kind of wanted to just process it with you all while it's fresh. And so I did not actually have that much left to read. I think I had like 35 pages, which I thought I had more, but it was 35 really good pages. So it really concluded all the stuff with the investigator, like all his questions and what he was trying to get at and what did he really know about her and what was she hiding, right? Cause I, that was the whole thing. I'm like, she's hiding something. She's hinting at it, all these things. I was like, what is it? I figured it had to do with her husband. I wasn't sure kind of how much, but it was kind of one of those things of like, when is it okay to take justice into your own hands? And is it really okay? I mean, cause I feel like she has lived with this guilt her whole life. She's lived with kind of viewing herself a certain way. 
based on kind of the situation she was put into that she didn't really realize what kind of man she was marrying and all of that and just the oh when like she told the story of how he treated her I was just like he's a terrible person but at the same time I'm just never sure what to do with storylines where they kind of take it into their own hands and she did that twice in this book which I thought was just an interesting aspect to her character which just makes her a little bit morally gray in my opinion so I didn't love that part of the story, but I still loved the book. I still feel like I was wanting to pick it up from pretty much the first page to the last page. There were very few sections that just drug on for me that I just was like, oh, I'll just pick it up later. And so I loved it. I really, really liked it. I thought it was very interesting. And similar to As Bright as Heaven, there's just kind of this national event. And then you kind of get it the family's approach to it. And it's similar in this one, I actually feel like even less so were we really immersed in the earthquake. I feel like we are more immersed into kind of this mystery of like who this guy is and how does he think he's gonna get away with it. What did you guys think of the end of like Kat going to her father's trial? Like when she was older, I wasn't sure how old she was, like in her 20s or something like that. And she attended his trial and he recognized her. And, and so I liked that. I liked the conclusion of that. I liked that it did kind of tie things up, that question of like, is he still alive? And clearly the answer was yes. Is he still doing the things he's doing? And the answer was yes. And so I liked how it kind of tied that bow. And it also kind of concluded the story of Sophie and just told that she actually remarried and she was happy, which I was happy to hear about. So all in all, I feel like I really enjoyed the book. I feel like it's, um, I feel like four and a half, five star book for me. So I really liked it and I can't wait to hear what you guys think of it. Let me know all your thoughts because Susan Meisner is definitely a favorite of mine and now I have a couple other ones on my shelves that I want to get to. I have actually two. The Charmed Life one and the War, the war one. I can't remember exactly what their names are, but so now I want to pick those up even more after reading this book. So what do you guys think? How many stars did you give it? Give me all the thoughts. So anyway, that is kind of my thoughts, my final thoughts on the book. Now, all right, I want to talk a little bit about the book club. I have loved this book club. I've really enjoyed engaging with all of you and chatting different books and hearing your thoughts and perspectives on all the different books. And there's just something about historical fiction books that just kind of brings you in like emotionally and all the things like, and so I've really enjoyed sharing that with you guys. But I feel like at this point in my life, it's not very sustainable. And I was like, I think I made it five months, right? It's just this idea that I really wanted to take off and I feel like I could have made it work in just a different season of life. Like we're starting back up homeschool and my twins are getting older. I just have less white space in my life. That's all it is. And even though I really enjoy the book club, it's just an added thing I have to do, which I never like books to be like that, even though like I, I fully enjoy it and I fully enjoy engaging with all of you. But my plan is to just kind of stop the book club. I'm actually probably going to keep reading the books I had planned. So I'll put up a, a little graphic to remind you of the books that I had planned for September, October, November, December. So you're welcome to read them with me because I still am going to read them. I'm still going to read them. I'm just not going to kind of share it, if that makes sense. I'm probably going to close the book club on Goodreads and just call it a success. That's how I want to look at it. Like it was good. It was really fun for this season and I'm really happy I did it. And I decided the best thing for me is to close the chapter before it becomes daunting, before it becomes something I don't enjoy. And I just wanna end on a high note. And honestly, ending on, <laughs> ending on a Susan Meisner book is ending on a high note for me. So I'm so thankful for all of you who stuck around and enjoyed the vlogs and enjoyed reading the books. And so anyway, I just wanted to let you all know that. This will be the last vlog and the last book club book, but that's okay. Let's all keep reading historical fiction together. So that's all I have. And I hope you're having a wonderful summer. Let me know any thoughts, thoughts on the book, thoughts on the book club, all the thoughts. And otherwise I will see you in the next book video. All right, have a wonderful day. Take care.